Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, today uh, is the third day of this uh, workshop, and we are starting the uh, second session of the third day. Uh, so today's topic also is very much interesting. It is based on ethnography. And uh, of course, uh, the speaker will be deliberating more on this uh, uh, topic. Now, before starting, a very good afternoon to Honorable Professor Tommy Trial, uh, Chancellor of Adamas University, to Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor Sir Dr. Dipendra Kumar Jha, and good afternoon to all the uh, research uh, fraternity and to the research and development division of Adamas University, uh, Professor Dr. Jitendra Kumar Pandey, uh, Professor Dr. Mohamita Mukherjee, and our Pro Vice Chancellor Sirs, Professor Dr. Novin Das and Professor Ujjal Chow. Uh, so I, uh, Dr. Pratita Viswas, on behalf of the Center for Research, Education and Development, warmly welcomes you. Uh, to this session. And before going into uh, further the topic and the details, uh, I would like to say a few words about Adamas University. Adamas University is at present ranked as number one in Kolkata among all the private universities. It is comprised of nine different schools of study as well as a school of professional studies to prepare students for various competitive examinations by improving their skills. Adamas University is recognized by the University Grants Commission, offering several undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral degree courses in education, engineering and technology, science, pharmacy, humanities, law, media and communication, and management studies. Uh, now, we are in the research methodology workshop and uh, we are actually representing uh, the Center for Education, Research and Development. It was the brainchild of, of course, uh, Adamas University, our Honorable Chancellor Sir and Vice Chancellor Sir as well. And uh, last year, the idea was developed uh, where 10 uh, research centers were approved and among them, uh, mine is one of them where uh, we, I am one of the center coordinators and uh, I have a team which I have already uh, discussed uh, during the inaugural day. Uh, so uh, we will be uh, actually uh, joined by uh, Dr. Sushmita Bhattacharya. Uh, Today uh, she is our, our speaker and resource person. So let me say a few words about Dr. Sushmita Bhattacharya. She is an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology, University of Calcutta. She has her master's degree in sociology from University of Calcutta and PhD from Jadavpur University. Her area of research is linked with cultural studies. Her interest areas are sociology of literature, media, Indian sociological thought, research methodology, and industrial sociology. She is engaged in several kinds of writing endeavors in pure academics as well as in socio-cultural uh, studies. So we welcome you, Dr. Bhattacharya, in today's session. And uh, we are actually on the third day. And this is the second session for your information. Uh, so ma'am will be speaking on ethnography and cultural studies. Uh, so thank you, ma'am, for joining. And we welcome you. And uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Okay. Uh, so, my uh, sincere thanks to everyone for giving me the wonderful uh, opportunity to give my opinion and to share my uh, thought with uh, such a wonderful academic community. And my sincere Thanks for giving this opportunity to Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, sorry, Honorable uh, Chancellor, sir, and Vice Chancellor, the Vice Chancellors of Adamas University, Research and 
Student Development Division and Organizing Advisory Committee of Adamus University for this uh, workshop. And last but not the least, uh, I want to thank the convener, Dr. Prakthita Vishash, Associate Professor and HOD, School of Education, Research Center and Coordinator at Center for Education, Research and Development, Adamas University. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, such a wonderful arrangement. And now I want to uh, start my discussion. And uh, here is a PPT for uh, my uh, exchanging uh, thoughts for you. So I just want to have some few minutes uh, because I want to share the PPT. Thank you. Is it visible? At present, it is not visible. You may share the screen sharing right is given to you, ma'am. Is it visible Is it visible now? No, it is not visible. Okay, okay. Yes. Just one minute, please. You can share the screen uh, directly. It will be coming. Yes, I have shared the screen. Just yes. one minute, please. I try again. Now? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Now it is perfectly all right. You can make it at full screen. Is the full screen visible? After some time, it will be, ma'am. You can uh, continue. Uh, if you can uh, press F five. Yes, I just want to want to make it full screen. I don't know why. Press what happened? Five, ma'am. Okay, just one minute, please. Yes. know what happened. I can't go for full screen by no problem ma'am you can continue not a problem okay. because the content is more important so we can continue. Okay. Uh, so today my topic is ethnography, art and creativity. And I want to begin with a definition that uh, the term ethnography can be divided into two parts one is ethno and the other is prep so for ethno part we know that ethno means people and graphy means writing so it is nothing but something about people so if we go for Textual analysis, we can find out that ethnography literally means a portrait, a portrait of people. And ethnography 
is defined by Harrison Johnson in 2000 as a written description of a particular culture with respect to customs, beliefs, and behavior based on information collected through fieldwork. So, if our concern is for going towards ethnography, then we can go for a study of people in deep analysis. And ethnography, according to Fetterman, is the art and science of describing a group or culture. The description may be of a small tribal group in an exotic land or a classroom in middle class suburbia. So it can be any kind of group. Our focus is on the analysis and description of the particular group. It is definitely a particular kind of research. Here, the focus is transformation. And what kind of transformation? Initially, the researchable objects become vague. But when we start the research of ethnography, then they becomes we. So the researcher has the initiative to transform they into we. This is the most important focus of ethnography. And uh, the strength of ethnography lies in the use of more than one method. Here, many methods can be used according to the advantages and situational uh, need of the researchers. Collection of data can be done by field notes, journals, audiovisual materials, and even cultural articles. The researcher should be very much concerned about gaining the consent of people before starting the research because it involves in-depth analysis. And here, disclosure of identity and confidentiality should be another important focus because the researcher has to be very much conscious about maintaining the confidentiality of the nature of data. Your balance of information must be properly done. That is ethnography. That is the specificity of ethnography. If you want to know a very basic features of ethnography, then we can define the features by following Angrisino. He defined an ethnography as a method with some characteristics like personalized. Ethnographic uh, explanation is very much personalized because researcher has to play both the role of observer and participant. Because researcher has to participate in the group activities for gaining very in-depth information which can't even found from the outside. Researcher collects data in multiple ways. So triangulation of different kinds of method is need here. And the research period extends over a lot of time. So it's a very longitudinal study. And ethnography is essentially a dialogical study. It depends upon the relation between the researcher as well as the researchable objects. Here in ethnography, it 
think it is now clearly visible? Yes, ma'am. Now it is fully visible. Okay, okay. Thank you. In ethnography, certain jargons are used. First is very important but very uncommon, the word emic. Emic implies inside. And ethic. Ethic implies outside. Both the terms epic and etic were coined by Hall in 2003. Here, ethnography lies in the dialectics between emic and etic. Because ethnography essentially emerges from the dialectical relationship between inside and outside analysis. Here, another important focus is on key informant or key actor. Whenever researchers want to go for ethnographic study, they have to search some key informants or key actors. They are closely chosen by the researcher for interaction partners. And uh, Fetterman in 98, 1998 pointed out the role of key informant or key actor in ethnography. And culture, which is a very broad word, is also very important in the jargons of ethnography because ethnography initially was recognized as a part of cultural study. Now ethnography can be utilized in other spheres also, but ethnography was initially focused on cultural study. And here the focus of culture includes beliefs, values, behavior of cohesive group. So for ethnographic understanding, this four jargons will be very important. Now, I want to share the historical background of ethnography. It was observed that prior to early 90s, most ethnographic information was collected by amateurs. It was completely amateurish study at the outset. There, the missionaries, colonial administrators, and travelers were most important in the data collection method. But initially, it was observed that all the beneficiaries are connected with native place, quote unquote native place. And the researchers, those who are not researchers actually, they are missionaries or colonial administrators or travelers, they were engaged in armchair theorizing because they never went on field for data collection. And that was the early 1900 century, sorry, early 19th century or 1900 situation for ethnography. After that, the situation has changed. Now the idea of going out and talking to people and learning about the natives Started. That becomes the starting point of modern ethnographic study. From the beginning of 20th century, we can notice two specific independent intellectual trends in anthropological research, which were directly linked with the emergence of ethnography. First is British trend and second is North American trend. British trend was emerged 
with the classical tradition of social anthropology in Britain. And there we have people like Malinowski, Burst, Rapkid Brown, Ivan Pritchard, all of the notable names of social anthropology at that time. And initially it was a very important fact that there was a close association between social anthropology and British colonialism. Because the understanding of culture, understanding of specifically native culture was tied to the needs of British Empire. So anthropology, social anthropology, ethnography, all disciplinary methods were started with the help of that kind of trained. So the socio-political scenario of British trend can be interpreted with the connection of colonialism. Now, the trend was popularized by Chicago School in Sociology. Their observational techniques were popularized for exploring groups on the margins of urban industrial society in the United States in 1920s and 30s. And with all the specificities of two groups, we come to know that studies of ethnography includes three basic new areas. First is numerous deviant sub subgroups like prostitutes, drug dealers, drug peddlers, street gangs. Second group can be linked with various unusual urban occupation, such as taxi dance or stasis, jack rollers, janitors, and hobo. All these are very unusual urban occupations. And the third group includes relatively unknown social roles like flop houses, Polish immigrants, Jewish ghetto culture, and the culture of Islam. So these are the very uncommon areas where ethnographic studies were done. Why ethnography can be linked with multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach? Because the application of anthropology was there initially, now it is linked with cultural anthropology, sociology, business, and even very, very modern organizational psychology. So what are the methods of ethnography? According to Agrosino, three methods of data collection were used here. First is observation, second is interviewing, and third is archival research. And for observation, participant observation is the mostly accepted form here. So researcher participates in the group activity for collecting data. To meet with the people and the study, but they want to maintain a professional distance from them. And interrelationship can be developed between the people of the field setting with the researcher here. Second approach, interviewing is a process of directing conversation for collection of data. And archival research involves the analysis of existing materials stored for research, service or other purposes. 
officially as well as unofficially. So these three methods are very popular for epigraphic research. There are certain steps here. Singleton and straights identify the following steps. First is problem formulation. Well, any other research, we have to start with problem formulation here also. We start with problem formulation. And then the very important point is selection of research setting where we will go through the research process. What is gaining access? Because we know ethnography is very intricate research. So the researcher has to be a member of the group. So gaining access is very important. Then researcher has to present oneself in front of the group under study. And the last of all, gathering and recording of information. But the question arises with this. When and how they can gather and record information? And what type of information should be taken here? So these are the stakes. Now, there are certain specialities of ethnographic studies. The relationship, the field relationship between the researcher and the subject is very important here. And everything depends upon the relationship between the researcher and the subject. So field relationship is very, very focused area in the study. It depends upon reflexivity. Reflexivity between the researcher and the subject. The most important area of ethnographic research is relationship. So it is very important to build trust and rapport between them. And for the entry, ethnographic research needs gatekeepers. Who will give us the entry to the confined group? So gatekeepers, concept of cultural gatekeepers can be used here as a part of cultural study. There are several subjects of study in ethnography. It includes senses. There can be good vibes, there can be negative vibes. So researcher has to note down everything, every kind of senses. Sensibilities are very important in this context. Details about physical setting should be noted with special emphasis to size, space, noise, colors, equipments, and even movements. So here, physical setting, on the basis of the people and the study should be taken into account. And then the most important part, that is the people in the setting. The number of the people, gender, dress, appearance, dress movement, comportment, feeling, and tone. Everything should be noted by the researcher properly. Researcher should be one should be mostly careful about key events like weddings functions and the goal of researcher is to select noteworthy incidents out of the flow of the ongoing activities. Data source can be included by the several 
in trees like people, setting, and light objects being observed. Now, how can we say ethnography as a new one? Because theoretically, we can relate phenomenology with ethnography. Because the roots of ethnography can be easily linked with phenomenological understanding. Edmund Husserl developed philosophical ideals called phenomenology. Phenomenology essentially focuses on phenomena. Here also, the Scoring of human experience becomes very important. And in ethnography, the researcher tries to grasp phenomena. From that perspective, phenomenology can be taken as theoretical root for ethnographic study. Was a very famous saying that good ethnography is usually good phenomenology because ethnography studies phenomena. Which kind of phenomena? Definitely the phenomenon which are sorry, the phenomenon which is centered on people's life because ethno means people. Created with life history because in life histories we can have intimate and personal collections of lifetime experiences from certain members of the community being studied. And life histories actually reveal how people perceive react and contribute to the changes that affect their life. So from that perspective, because ethnography deals with people's life, we can do this. Because uh, media purpose on the contemporary situation and media, I, according to my understanding, media want to go for face-to-face -face analysis. So I think uh, with, uh, offline ethnographic study will be much more effective for media. But in the case of uh, difficulties, in the case of uh, pandemic-like situation, in the case of uh, some spatial situation where we can't go for adopting uh, offline study, then we for online ethnographic study, but, but for media, I, I will always prefer offline ethnographic study. It will be very interesting. Okay, thank you. So the next question is, how ethnography is related to organizational psychology? Actually, ethnographic study can be done for any area. And uh, organizational psychology is uh, a very important area for today's organization uh, because today uh, clinical psychology and psychology is applied all over the social science areas. I think uh, ethnographic study can be easily done if we send some researcher in the organization to go through the intricate details of the organization for the sake of the health of the employee, psychological health of the employee, it will be very easy for us to give them some creative guideline for the maintenance of organizational rules. So for studying organizational relationship, ethnographic study will be very much fruitful. And organizational management, organizational aspect of stress, uh, some studies of organizational culture, 
can be done very uh, efficiently with the help of a program. Thank you. So we will take the last question because there are a lot of questions as well as uh, admiration messages pouring in in the chat box uh, and everyone is very much enriched uh, by this uh, session of yours, madam. Uh, so a um, lot of uh, uh, very much uh, uh, good comments like insightful and informative session of yours. And then uh, many of you has thanked you a lot on uh, uh, throwing light on the important issues. So with that, we will take the last question of Balwinder Kaur. Uh, she has asked that, ma'am, sometimes social researches become more philosophical instead of being general. So why is it so? Actually, ethnographic research cannot be philosophical because you have to go to the field, you have to uh, go for, uh, in, you have to go for a struggle for gaining access. Uh, you can't be philosophical if you want to be. You don't be. You can't be philosophical whenever you want to go for ethnographic study. It is very hard. Ethnographic study is very interesting. I must say. But it is very hard because it is very hard to live with a community which is completely unknown to you. And it is also very difficult to gain entry in the very uh, different group from your culture. So um, I think uh, if you have in your mind some philosophical understanding, if you go to the field, then you can't go with this philosophical understanding because in the clash, because with the clash of reality, this kind of philosophy will, I think that will uh, not stand too much uh, because uh, with the clash of reality, uh, you will be very much uh, confident with the field uh, relationship and you will be very much uh, interested with new kinds of relationship. So the place of philosophy will be minimized very soon. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so with that, uh... We are ending. If you have, I know a lot of questions are there, but we have to keep track of the time and ma'am is also a busy person. Uh, so it is almost three and uh, of course with the vote of thanks, we will be ending this session. Uh, so uh, again, a lot of thanks to you, madam, for this uh, wonderful session and uh, participants, you, uh, you are having a lot of questions. You can mail me, mail us. Uh, so that we can send to ma'am and uh, she will be very much patient to answer in her free time. Okay, so now we have uh, come at the end of the session. And uh, of course, uh, ma'am has uh, spoken about a lot about ethnography and collaboration and about uh, every possible areas of uh, the uh, research on ethnography. So with that, I would like to share with you uh, something with ma'am and with uh, everyone. That is on the 7th of June, uh, our Honorable Chancellor Sir Professor Shomit uh, Ray has signed a use uh, with the uh, Memorandum of Understanding with uh, all these uh, uh, very reputed universities all over the world. You can see that Zeyshian Ispan University of Hungary and Financial University under the government of the Russian Federation, Moscow, uh, Russia.